anyway, this video is because I want to address a few like questions or stuff that I've heard regarding this current situation with the coronavirus. Um, a lot of people are saying, you know, like, this is it. There's a fine economic crash is here, the depression, the Great Depression. Everyone says it's all over. Many people believe it's all over. And many financial experts are on the TV and saying, you know, they've never seen anything like this before. And the economy is ruined and God's people are panicking and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Now, personally, I don't believe that to be the case. I'm not preaching a message of peace and safety, to clarify. Personally, I think all of this that's happening is just a wake-up call for God's people. I believe that we are under the first siege. You know, if you've read the Great Controversy, you've studied history. Just before Rome was going to destroy Jerusalem, it circled like Jerusalem, the temple, Titus and his armies. Then all of a sudden they withdrew and there was time for God's people to run to escape. But then on the second siege, then, you know, it was finished. I think we're under the first siege, like God is allowing this to happen, to wake us up, to just show us how quickly things can just shut down like that, how you can just lose your supplies, your rights can be taken away just like that, and how dangerous it is to be in the city right now. So I think God is doing this to wake us up, you know, to tell us that, you know, we really need to start taking our salvation serious. And I think this whole thing is going to ease. I think it's going to be a dent in the economy. It's going to be a rough road for many of us. Many will lose their jobs. But I think there's going to be another time of peace, which will be the time for God's people to really like make plans and get out before that great final crisis really hits. So I think God is allowing this, as I mentioned, to wake us up. And also because we need to understand the God that we serve. And our God is a God of love. He's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And at this moment in time, God's people, we're just not ready. We are not ready for what we have ahead of us. Let's be honest, mentally, physically, spiritually, the majority of us are not ready. You know, unfortunately, our leaders have been putting us to sleep within our church. They're not preaching, you know, the message, the hard-hitting messages we're supposed to be hearing at this time. So God's people, especially the younger generation, just don't have a clue. They just don't know what we have ahead of us. So God is allowing this to happen. So the message could be spread. The everlasting gospel has to go to the world. It's in his love and in his mercy. He's allowing this to happen simply to wake us up and to really start making moves when all of these restrictions ease and there's that relative time of peace. You know, so that's what I believe. Before God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham came to him and said, you know, it's like testing the character of God. He was like, if there's 10 righteous people, would you still destroy the city? The Lord was like, no. Then Abraham goes, is it five? Is it one? If there is one person, God is going to withhold the wind so that person can have time, you know, to know him, you know, come to repentance. You know, and I just think there's many people out there that just don't know, you know, so I think this is for them, this is for us, you know, just to get ready. And I think at this time, a lot of people are just moving through fear, you know, many people want to know God now because, you know, they see that their livelihood, their economy, their, their, their economic, their economics or whatever, like their income, you know, is at risk, it's going to be a great dent, you know, to their financial stability. So I think a lot of people are just moving through fear right now. And you cannot serve God through fear. You can't love someone through fear. That's not love, you know. So you really have to test your heart and your motive in this time and ask yourself, like, why am I fearful? You know, is it because of myself? You know, I mean, am I fearful for the right reasons? Am I fearful for my brethren, for my family? Do I fear God? Or am I fearful because I want to preserve self? You know, I want to serve God now through fear. You know, that's not going to run. I think when the crisis really hits, it's going to be so unexpected. Yeah, anyway, I don't want to take too much of your time here. But those are just my thoughts, you know. And I want to say that the true Christian would not fear death, you know. The apostles, poor, amazing, they didn't fear death, they rejoiced in death. 
because as a true Christian, when you die, if you've lived your life as a true Christian, when you die, your life still continues to witness for Christ. Ellen White died over a century ago. Her life, her books still witness. The disciples, Christ, their lives are still a testimony, you know. That's what the Apostle Paul didn't fear death. If you're a true Christian, you wouldn't fear death. Your testimony goes on. You know, not to mention this world is not our home. You know, this is temporary. You know, so in this time, I'm kind of rejoicing because people are kind of more interested, like, in the word. It confirms that the Bible, the spirit of prophecy is true because they were telling us this before. You know, I just feel sad for many of the people who may have died because of the coronavirus. And the coronavirus, in my opinion, it's not even a big deal. It's not even the most dangerous illnesses, in my opinion. Now, I know there are many people who are vulnerable, who have weak immune systems, or the elderly that are at risk. But this virus, you can easily treat it through the eight laws of health. Like the medical system, they don't know anything, really. They're out of God's will. If you're out of God's will, you don't know God. You know, so even with this virus, that just means it can be just easily treated, like... And we as a church should have been using this opportunity to share the medical missionary work. We are told the last work to be done is the medical missionary work. When all avenues are closed, it's got to be the medical missionary work, you know. But the church is running scared. They've shut down their doors, you know. So we're trying to say that the virus is more powerful than God, you know, that he can't do these amazing miracles for God's people. Like, where's our faith? You know, it's just crazy that like, this is a time where we as a people should be shining bright with the health message. But what are we doing, right? Following the ways of Babylon. And that's just so sad. You know, so um, yeah, so just use this time, like, wisely now to really seek God. Get your house in order. If you've got savings, start asking the Lord what you should do with that money, you know. Because like, I've been saving for my country home and I'm like, Lord, if I have to get rid of this money, let me get rid of it, but let me do it wisely. I don't like having money in the bank just sitting there at this time. I really don't like it. But, you know, I've been saving for a home in the country and I'm like, what do I do, Lord? So now it's just asking the Lord, what is his will in your life, you know? What do I do, Lord? Consecrate and give your heart to him. Well, he can be found now. So <clears throat> that's the end of this message. Um, also, the sun's coming out now. It's been really nice here in Switzerland. So make sure you get your vitamin D. Don't lock yourself in because that's not healthy. The sun is antiviral. In fact, studies are showing that the sun will help slow down the spread of this virus. They did an interesting study where they found that when the virus went to Malaysia and some of the warm countries didn't spread so much because of heat, whereas when it reached Italy, it was like sort of near winter, it wasn't that hot, and Japan, it was like really cold. But now with summer, I think it's going to like just really ease the spread of this virus, you know, and things are going to just go back to normal, and then God's people will sleep again. Then something would happen, then it'll be too late. But don't let it be too late for you guys. Let's get ready now. Also understand the power of prayer, like of withholding the four winds as well. Because prayer is so powerful, you know, so really to be praying, sounding the alarm and getting ready. Anyway, I won't take up too much of your time. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. I've got an amazing testimony for you guys, which I might share tomorrow. I might do a vlog and I'll share my testimony with you. Good news. And um, yeah, anyway, take care, God bless and goodbye.